And it's uh, really about a decade ago, some folks got together and they said, um, what if we want to put unmanned aircraft on an aircraft carrier? How do we do that? This X-47B prototype is the world's first tailless fighter-sized drone. But it's still a year or two away from its first goal, to take off and land on an aircraft carrier. We're maturing the technology required to take this unmanned vehicle to land on the flight deck uh, autonomously. We're focusing on the mechanics of landing the aircraft where you have a predetermined position that you're targeting to and the aircraft can react very quickly to changes in that environment to put itself on that pre-planned position. The system has a lot of sensors, a lot of instrumentation on it, so it knows how all of its subsystems are behaving, it knows how its engine and, and all of its control surfaces are performing at any time. It'll turn where we expect it to turn, it'll come back when we expect it to come back, and it'll land on the runway that we planned. Drones are no longer just eyes in the sky, and someday UAVs like the X-47B may be involved in sophisticated attacks alongside manned jets. It's the idea of the mix, the team working together. That's probably the future. You won't see every plane on the aircraft carrier be one of these. So right now the vision is, oh, we'll just have one or two. But when they get them and maybe they prove more useful, then it may be, well, we don't want one or two, we want a squadron. It's a lot like if you look at the first use of uh, mechanized forces. Originally it was lots of horses and just a couple of trucks and tanks, and then you saw things change and change and change over time. We'll probably see the same thing happening with robotics. As drones like the X-47B mature, they'll become more autonomous, likely conducting bombing runs, then more complicated air-to-air -air operations. Even as policymakers debate the rules of engagement for drones, technology is moving forward toward a time when drones might operate with intelligence that more closely resembles our own. But for now, they can't do what a pilot can. When you get an aircraft like this over hostile territory, you'll have potential targets or threats that will pop up unplanned. So what we haven't done yet is develop the technology that would then react to those unplanned um, targets or threats. Thank you very much for coming to Pax River today. I think UAVs of the future will uh, certainly be able to exhibit increased levels of autonomy. But I think if you were to ask most autonomy researchers or most AI researchers about whether uh, the rise of the machines type scenario is, is a real concern, they would, their response would be, we should be so lucky. Um, and in fact, if we could get little slivers of, of that kind of adaptive and cognitive capability into systems, uh, that would be a very significant breakthrough over where we stand today. Angry t check. I've flown about 2,000 hours, and the missions that I've flown uh, seldom go as planned. There's a lot of pieces that you cannot plan for. Nothing can replace the human being in a tactical environment seeing what to do next and why not this and why not that. An Airbus 320 with 150 passengers goes into a flock of Canadian geese and needing to land. I can't do it. I'm going on the Hudson. You want to be in a robotic 320 in that situation? Or do you want Solenberg to land you? Because you can't anticipate everything. This ability to respond to the unknown may be the final hurdle if drones are ever to fully replace manned planes and start making decisions on their own. I think we're far, but let me say, I am the last guy who says, yeah, impossible. As human ambition drives innovation forward, the only thing that's certain is that the Predator and other drones of today are nothing compared with what's to come. Ultimately, DARPA's mission uh, is the creation and prevention of strategic surprise. So if we are successful, we will all be surprised. Historically, you look at when the Wright brothers first flew in 1903, 100 years later, we were actively flying a remotely piloted aircraft. So we're kind of on the ground floor now. There's nowhere to go but up. 